Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Reason Refuge Farm. I just came out this evening. Um, it's just a tad darker out here than I would have liked for what I'm about to do, but it's okay. I, sh I just should have got out here about 20 minutes ago. Um, I'm gonna take some photos. Figured I'd take you guys with me. You seem to like whenever I come take photos and show you. So I actually bought this. This is some used camera gear that I bought online and um, I just, I'm in a part of multiple groups for like photography equipment and I have been for a long time. I was a photographer before I did YouTube. Um, I had a photography business specializing in maternity, birth, and infants for um, a few years. I didn't do it for a super long time. I did like family portraiture before that and then finally so kind of settled into my niche, which I love. But when we moved on to the farm, started homeschooling, um, being on call for births became pretty problematic. So kind of ended that season. And it was a bummer for me in ways to end that season, but I realized after the fact that I was really burnt out. And you know, sometimes something can be a hobby and you can be so passionate about it, but then you turn it into a job and can really lose your drive for it. And that's kind of what happened with photography for me. Now I get to take photos of my farm, which is so good. And I'm out here now, and I'm gonna give this equipment a test run. Um, it is a gift for a very dear friend of mine who hopefully will not watch this vlog and see it. Actually, most of the people in my real life do not regularly watch my vlog, um, except my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> but, so hopefully this person will not see this if they do. Oh well. So look at little Delmer. He's gonna be my first subject with those goofy teeth and I'm gonna bend down here and get a photo before he steps up. Y'all, look how cute he is. He's not sure about this clicky camera. Delmer's doing really well. And, you know, we've been handling him some. I'm not necessarily wanting to make him a back pocket cow because he's going to become a big bull. And, uh, you know, I don't really want him to act like a pet. I'd rather him act like, you know, cattle. Kind of maybe have a healthy respect for us and want to steer clear of us a little bit. But Freya is being a sweet mama. She's done great on her first time. Uh, we've been letting them out here together during the day and they both go up into the barn stall at night just to make sure that they're safe. <laughs> Being right here by the house and with the dogs around and stuff, I really don't feel like there's any threat of a predator, but I do tend to err on the side of caution. That's just how I do things in my life. <laughs> I'm typically more cautious, especially when it comes to animals. I throw way more caution to the wind in the garden. Um, you know, I take bigger risks and stuff like that. But anytime we're talking about animals, um, I'm probably a little bit of a helicopter mom and that's okay. There's just enough loss already without taking risks on a farm. <laughs> Delmer and Hallie have been going back and forth up and down the fence. Uh, they've not been introduced to each other up close yet. So I did want to clarify something that I mentioned in my last vlog and I had some people ask questions about. I had milked, I had some colostrum that I was asking some questions about. I had several people say, well, why wouldn't the calf get the colostrum? Um, he's not being taken away from her at all right now. What we're doing is leaving the calf on 24 7 he is always with her he is getting his fill they produce a lot so we are milking some to alleviate engorgement um we will start milking her out we started today um when he's a week old we'll start milking her out fully in the morning but he's still on her and he's eating more and more and then you wait a little while longer and then you put the calf in a separate stall overnight usually where they can still see each other and interact through the fence and then you milk in the morning and then you reunite them throughout the day that's called calf sharing um, commercial dairies take 
calves away instantly and um, you get more milk that way obviously and they a lot of times will get rid of calves or they'll bottle raise them if it's calves they're going to keep we calf share just because i feel like that makes more sense for our farm i think in many homesteads that makes more sense because your home it gives you more flexibility so when the calf is older if you need to like you have an emergency and you need to skip milking you just leave the calf on the cow and you stuff to feed her but um you don't have to necessarily milk now milk supply goes down you don't want to make a habit of that but it's kind of nice to have a plan b in case you have an emergency and in our experience that just makes for healthier animals but yeah so people were saying why are you taking that we're not taking that away he's getting all he wants that's what's left over after he's done and she's still very engorged look at these jersey girls with all their eyeshadow everybody's got dark faces for winter Hope looks really different this year. This is Hope. She looks so different than when we first got her. I, I think it's crazy that they change so much seasonally. I had no idea. I think that I like to think of them as fashionistas. Look how dark Hallelujah's face is getting. She has a really thick winter coat, which I think is so funny. They just all look so different. And little Delmer is here for it. He's so cute. Well, I got a few good pictures of him. Let's go up here. It's getting pretty dark, but I'll see. I was gonna just snap a few around the farm. Really just trying to play with the camera. Buying used gear, if there's a problem, you wanna know right away. So that's why I put this all together to bring it out. It works as it's supposed to. So now I'm just having fun at this point. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hop over the fence into the chickens, and I'll be honest, this is hard to do holding one camera, much less two. The number of tarps that I have gotten tangled in this electric fence while I try to walk over it with my vlog camera. Oh, I don't ever show y'all that footage, because <laughs> it's embarrassing. I'm gonna put this down. Listen, I'm just not as flexible as I once was. Do you feel me on that? I just can't get that leg up that high. <laughs> and obviously I could just unlatch the fence and open it, but where's the fun in that? There's only two eggs in here, but let's see. I bet it makes a nice picture. Now in the grass. Y'all, if I could just even guess how many pictures of eggs I've taken in my years of transition between photographer and farming YouTuber, it's a lot. And actually, I think people should take pictures of things like eggs. Why not appreciate beautiful things when you see them, right? She's like, I don't want this. <laughs> oh, everyone's coming for their close up. Are you here for your close up? I'm actually going to put these back in this nest box. <laughs> So that I don't break them in my pocket because I'm not ready to go back in the house and I have made enough pocket omelets in my life I just don't feel like making one today see ya thanks for the modeling pictures I'll bring your payment and feed tomorrow y'all I've got about a week left with all this fall color all around the farm the oak trees are in different shades of golden and orange all those sawtooth oaks along the ponds are like just ablaze. Got about a week and it'll be gone. So, I have a lot of feelings about that, but I'm gonna handle it with maturity <laughs> and the reality that I can do nothing about it. <laughs> just don't love the gray winter, you know, but it's so necessary. See, I'm trying to be optimistic and be like, but I know that it's good, rest is good. But I, inside, there's also this part of me that's like, I don't want to. <laughs> no, thank you. All of my kids, when they were little and like learning manners, I remember all of them. You know, that you would try to get them to do something they didn't want to do. And they'd say, no, thank you. And you're like, well, you still have to do this. 
like no thank you I don't want to take a bath right now or no thank you I don't want to eat my food or no thank you I don't want to go to bed and you'd just be like I appreciate the way you're using your manners but we have to do these things and they would just get really mad and be like no thank you that's how I feel right now like the leaves are starting to fall out and I'm like no thank you all right make sure I'm not gonna get a shock nope it's off so we moved the chickens which I told you all I would show you and I had a, an appointment but Maya brought the camera out so I'll show you now the process of moving a mobile chicken operation can be done by one person but of course it's easier with an extra set of helping hands we like to set our automatic coop door to stay closed the night before so in the morning the chickens are contained in the coop uh, which makes this a lot easier uh, here the guys are just getting the space ready to move the chickens over into because this was a garden space so there was some stuff in there like the weed fabric they pulled all of that out uh, to move the coop down and just cleaned the space out and next they just reset that netting now if you have more than one net you can set the new one up before you take the first one down but um, you can do it this way especially if you have a way to keep your chickens contained so, so they're setting the netting up um, the stakes are included in these nets so they don't require other posts this particular chicken coop we move with our tractor we do have it on skids therefore it could be pushed or pulled uh, but it is quite heavy and in the garden we have rows so the ground is uneven so it's just a lot easier to go ahead and move it over with the tractor set the fence up set the tension and let the chickens loose to do their gardening and they are now in this spot which was Cow peas, sunflowers, and sweet potatoes over the gardening season. And uh, they're just gonna kind of work their magic in here. In the day, they've already come through and done quite a bit. Like there were a few sweet potatoes that they unearthed in here that we had missed or they were damaged or whatever, so we had left them. And the chickens will go through here, scratch up roots, uh, insect larvae, weeds, which is all very good. And in the meantime, they will fertilize it and get this ready for next year's garden, which is great. Is this not a beautiful flock of birds? I just think they're so lovely. Now, normally I would come out here when there's more light and I would sit long enough for them to act natural. So I don't know how many great shots I'm gonna get with them right now. Oh, another thing we did here is we gathered up some manure out from the field with the cows and put it out here for the chickens to scratch in. We'll leave them on here, not a super long time, probably just like a few weeks, maybe a month, um, which is a lot longer than we leave them. In the spring and the summer when the grass is growing, we move them every few days and give them fresh grass but in the winter the grass isn't growing anyway so putting them on the gardens and letting them scratch it in we'll leave them here for a while depends on how long it takes them to really get this place cleared out and then we'll move them over into the field I've actually been doing a lot of garden planning the last couple of days getting ready to start seed shopping planning for next year I don't know why like it's as soon as everything starts turning gray and brown I just gear into the excitement and the plan for the next year. Not in a like necessarily rushing way, like I like that time. I, it, the hard part about being stuck inside comes paired with the beautiful part about planning for the next year and, and then the yearning that builds over the winter is what gives you the energy to do what you need to do to get the next year's garden in. Well, I'm running out of light. The camera I'm videoing on is newer than this and can handle low light a little bit better so you guys can still see me pretty well but this is it's a little dark for for this um at least handheld i would need a tripod to really do something well and not take pictures of something that's moving fast like a chicken so i'm wondering how you're doing um with this change of seasons some of you have been in the 
throes of winter, you know, weather for a while now and under snow and frozen ground. And then of course some of us are just now getting into, into it. But how do you do during the winter and what do you do to tide you over? Is it seed catalogs, garden planning? You know what, want to know something I do and this is something I've been doing. I love watching cooking shows and reading cookbooks. So for me, the garden planning goes so hand in hand with the love affair with food. If I stoke the fire, if you will, of that love of real food, it gives me such a drive to obtain the real food. We homestead for so many different reasons. And you know, I've had multiple people come in lately and be like, are you gonna start focusing more on animals than gardens? Like, no, it's just winter. That's just what we have going on. Um, it's all a package deal. It's all in relationship with each other. Just like now we have the chickens cleaning out the gardens and the cow manure going on the gardens. And even now in the off season, there's so much that goes into the health of the whole year. So much of this is fueled by a desire to eat well. And I've been stoking that fire again on that love affair with food. And um, just a love affair with all of it. I just find life so much better when you feel wooed by it. When you stop and you take the photos and you talk to the chickens and you admire the fleeting times like that little cow is only going to look like that for just a week you know and then he's going to be different and i mean you see hallie she's only 10 months old i mean it's just the things on the farm that change so fast and if you're not present you just miss it and that's just life and so what are you doing to savor the season that you kind of feel a little bit compelled to say no thank you to like what are you saying thank you to I'd love to know because if there's something I'm missing well, I don't want to miss anything <laughs> here's to the beautiful things and savoring instead of no thank you thank you for hanging out with me today and all the days that you do I bless you until next time